They all continue to bug me after we've left the coffee shop. I don't even notice when Ash takes a different turn on our way back. Where are we going? You can drop me off at the park. Guess. You have three chances. I'm serious, Ash. Where are we going? He doesn't answer, but shortly he stops his car in front of a small, nondescript food stall, a little ways away from the movie house. If I wasn't paying closer attention, I would have missed it without a doubt. He motions for me to wait as he gets off the car and walks in its direction. Sheesh, if you want to buy something, just say it. No need to make yourself look mysterious. Makes you look more like a dork than cool. The wait isn't long, however. Soon he's walking back, holding two fish-shaped cones in both hands. Ice cream? Parfait? A cross of the two? By the time he's back inside the car, I've given up any effort to figure out what he bought. Not that it looks bad. It's actually quite cute. Here, take it. I had to move my head back a little when he thrusts it at me to avoid the ice cream and the fruit toppings from ending up on my nose. What's this for? Oh, that's adorable. My arm's getting tired. Five, four, three, two. With a wary glance, I take it off his hands. I still don't understand why there's a need for ice cream today. Nevertheless, I take a small bite. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> it must have shown on my face because he chuckles as soon as I take another one. Saw the place open the other day when we watched Zack's movie. Thought I should give it a try. It doesn't seem like a bad place to get food from time to time. And you're giving me free ice cream because... Do I need to have a reason? Are you really going to ask me that? Here's the thing with Ashton Frey. He does not just treat anyone to free food because he feels like it. He's that much of a Scrooge. Heck, he even asked me to teach him how to haggle once. Haggle! Of all the people who'd ask me that, I'd have to ex I'd have expected such requests from Becca. But Ash? Not at all. If I'm going to be honest, he looks a bit constipated with that expression on his face right now. I think he's starting to regret ever buying this. I... Uh, the other day? The movie with Zack and Rebecca? Rebecca's there, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Oh boy, he's a little flustered. Anyway, during the movie, we, uh... That is, you, that's to say, you, uh, we... Uh, any day now, Ash. <sighs> Shit. Should have written down something first. Get to the point, Ashton. Right. I'm sorry. What? N not, I'm sorry for, you know, not getting to the point. I'm sorry for the other day. I got carried away. I said things that upset you. I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay? That's all? That's all you're going to say? You're not still angry, are you? You didn't have to buy me anything. A simple sorry would have been enough. I bite into the cone again. A small attempt to keep myself occupied and relieve the heat crawling up my face. It doesn't work, but at least I don't have to look at him. Why am I feeling embarrassed over an apology? I have no idea. It's not like it wasn't called for. They were being mean. Especially him. And... And... That fraction of a second it hits me. He skipped his day off. He skipped his day off just for today. I should be the one apologizing and thanking him. Silence is an awkward company while we finish our respective snacks. There are words for this. For people like us. For understandings and sentiments like this. Yet, in this instant, they won't come. 
As promised, he drops me off at the park right after. Phrases unsaid, still hanging heavily in the air. In this weather, the city park gives off a lazier and more languid vibe than usual. Where children are usually seen running around and playing, there are now people lying, leaning back on their picnic blankets, simply enjoying the afternoon sun. The smell of food drifts from nearby carts, and if the wind blows in the right direction, one would catch the whiff of freshly trimmed grass. Maybe I should try walking home today, to get my mind off things, to try and find the words somehow. I haven't done that in a while. Thanks, Ash, for today. No problem. Say hi to Rebecca for me. Yeah, I will. Even so, I linger. We both do. A mild, humid breeze brings the smell of dried leaves, warmed earth, and a far-off, distant memory. A false starts and awkward first meetings. Same place, same people playing the same parts. Funny how, of all the days, my brain chooses to remember it now. Wait, Belle. Ash exits his car. His strides are unsteady when he approaches me. Or maybe this is his uncertainty showing. I'm not quite sure. He has never looked uncertain to me before. Always calm, always sure, always collected. He stops a short distance from me, close enough that he's within an arm's reach but just far enough for his voice to be heard over a decent small talk, if this is what it's going to be. He fumbles for something in his pocket. Here, catch. The small bag lands clearly on my outstretched hands before it hits the ground. I raise an eyebrow at him, and he responds by shrugging and stuffing both his hands back to his pockets. Somewhere to the side, he finds an interesting spot to look at. Sometimes, sometimes you have to wait, Papa said long ago. For once this time, I listen. His voice is halting, hesitant, when he finds it again. My mom used to make me carry around one of those when I was young. To ward off evil and bring you luck, she said. I don't believe in this kind of thing now. But, but if it makes you feel safe, since you're a total scaredy cat, then, then I guess it's okay to give you one. Uh, okay. Did that just sound like his... Audio increase. Yeah. Yeah. It sounded a little louder. That was interesting. Perhaps at the moment there are... Perhaps at the moment there aren't any words for it. I've never been good with those. But right now, I could thank him in the best way I know. You're not bad after all, or you can be nice when you're trying. You're not bad after all. Let's see. Of course it would. I close the short distance separating us. And lightly, in place of phrases one couldn't spin together or answers too early to seek out, I lean over. Oh, Look, that's adorable! Mm. And give him a little peck on the cheek. That made his day for sure! <laughs> the touch is short fleeting, the kind that speaks volumes of boundaries we don't often cross as friends. Nevertheless, the thought is there. It lingers. In the gentle uh, autumn wind that passes, in the empty space separating us when I step back and look at him with a smile. It's easy to express gratefulness this way, isn't it? At least, with my own family, that's the case. For the two of us, 
I'm not quite sure. Did he understand? After all, gratitude is considerably harder to put into words. When you've spent the latter half of your friendship teetering between good-natured jests and ruffling each other's feathers, seconds pass before he clears his throat. His face has gone remarkably red. Whether from the heat or something else, I can't quite tell. But he understands. I know he does. Because the smile on him when he finally meets my eye is the gentlest I've seen him show. I, uh, gotta go. Got some reports I forgot to file the other day. Yeah, see you around. Thanks for the ice cream and the charm. Don't lose it. You won't find one here again if you do. I won't. I might move like I have two left feet, but I know how to take care of my own stuff. I'm not a total klutz. <laughs> I know. In Bell, remember that one time, Devlin Court? Oh, I do. With all the clarity in the world. You, at the time when we, what I'm trying to say is that you can rely on me if something, anything happens. Not the exact same thing, of course, but you get the idea. I'll be around. I'll keep that in mind. You're not that bad after all. Before leaving, he waves at me one last time. The next time we talk, we'll be back to the way we are. Because at the end of the day, that's how things have always moved between us. What we're familiar with. What we're comfortable with. But for all that, it's easy to put my own faith in him. I just hope... I just hope I can keep them safe. Keep him safe. A light wind blows again, sending dried leaves swirling and the distant smell of earth into the air. For the first time, the sunlight feels less harsh. Maybe a walk is good. I need to vision. I need. <laughs> I've been talking for I don't know how long. Words get slurred. I need to visit the gro. I need to visit the grocery too. Come to think of it, wasn't there an art store that opened recently near the park? The cat's name is. Bur Burthiel? What the frickin' crap is that? Burthiel. Burthiel. Or at least that's what the caller says. It's an odd name to give a cat, in my opinion. But it speaks grace, much like the one that it carries. It shows in the way he swishes his tail and his eyes follow my hands every movement. I'm not sure what he finds fascinating in me, to be honest. I wasn't in the very picture of Grace when he found me, after all. It was a bad idea, carrying two heavy bags of newly bought art materials and groceries without help or a sure ride home. In hindsight, uh, perhaps I shouldn't have bought all these at the same time. I didn't even make it past the park. And now I'm suffering underneath the glaring afternoon sun, hunched up on a park bench and drizzling drenched in sweat, in the company of a cat, curiously watching my every movement. I hope it stays where it is. It's just a black cat, but back at home, they're considered ill omens. D don't look at me like that! I can act graceful as well, if I want to. Not that I've ever acted graceful in my life, of course. Growing up with router a router... Growing up with rowdy younger brothers and sisters does that. Or maybe it's the opposite? Mama used to call me a little troublemaker before. Well, graceful or not, there's no use moping. A shorter breath and then I'm... Wait, a short breather and then I'm off home. Besides, it isn't like the company's bad, even if it's a cat. As long as it doesn't bite or crosses my path. Well Where's your owner, anyway? He has one, doesn't he? An owner? That's what the collar's for, isn't it? A bandage is wrapped on one of its paws, though. 
I wonder what happened to it. Did he run away? Well, if you don't have one, I won't be able to take you in. My apartment doesn't allow pets. I tried to bring one home before. A cat. Not black, of course. Uh, and Rebecca threw a fit before the landlady could. I take a small packet of sweets from one of the bags beside me and pop it open. As I'm about to put it into my mouth, he meows. My hand stops. Do, do you want one? He doesn't meow again, as I'm expecting him to. But I take his unblinking gaze as a yes. I shift the piece to my palm and hold it out to him warily. He sniffs at it once, twice, before... Perufia! Like a good, properly trained cat, Barufiel responds as soon as he's called. Recognition comes as soon as my head snaps in the direction of the voice. Miss McCullough's hard to miss. What with her height? I'm sorry. Did my cat hurt you? Miss Santos, was it? I'm surprised to see you here. Nice to meet you again, Miss McCullough. Were you harmed in any way? I'm sorry. Bruce feels not exactly fond of other people. Even run away from the veterinarian right now. Oh no! He was just sniffing my hand earlier. My Bruce feels a she. She? All this time, I thought... The pause in conversation, if this can be called one, is uncomfortable. We're merely two people working different jobs for the same client. Frankly, meetings like this don't happen a lot. And if it does, simple nodding of heads is enough. Still, trying to be friendly wouldn't help, right? Wouldn't help. Still, trying to be friendly wouldn't hurt, right? Talk about her cat. You want to talk about her cat instead of the job? Alright, do the job. <laughs> well, I, I don't care. Do the job. Okay. Um, I'm just curious about, about your work. Alright, how, how did that affect it? Ah, wait, was it always that high? Uh, I don't know. What the crap? What about it? There's something guarded in her expression at mention of work, but I push through with my question. I, I just want to know how it is to work on a house like the Ermengarde Mansion. Is it hard? I guess she wasn't expecting a question like that. If the way her eyebrows shot up tells me something- Because of its age? I wouldn't say it is. It is a challenge considering the factors me and my team have sought out. But it's a good project. A breath of fresh air from what I usually work on. And I have a good team. Those original fittings, though. It might be old, but the architecture is magnificent. I'm sure you've seen the stained glass windows in the foyer. Oh, I can already think of so many things I could do with it. But of course, my team will have to double check for necessary repairs here and there. That's probably for the best. It's easy to break some key elements with a rush restoration job, and who knows what other hidden issues there might be underneath. People- I'm sorry, I spoke too much. No, it's okay. You seem to really love what you're doing. It's not really like that. I'm just lucky to have found work in an interesting field. Uh, anyway, Bruthiel's due for her visit to the vet. Nice talking to you, Miss Santos. I wish you luck with what you're planning to work on. It seems like a big project, too. She gestures with her head towards the bags. The ones filled with stuff I've recently bought from the art store. It's a project for a friend, actually. All the same. Good luck. I watch her as she leaves, although she stops shortly before crossing the threshold separating the park and the street. She faces me again. Looking like there's something she's forgotten to say. By the way, about the Ermengarde Mansion, with my clients, it's the rights, I mean. I hope you don't mind me asking, but has the deal been finalized? There's still a few papers they need, but the house is more or less theirs now. Ah, thank you. That's all I needed to know. Wait, I... about the mansion. The, uh... The letter same one they saw. 
Whoever she is, she's asking for help. Someone. I want to tell Miss McCullough that the urban legends aren't just legends anymore. They're real. She's not gonna believe D me. Don't mind me! I, I need to go too! Have a good day, Miss McCullough. I hastened to pick all the bags I have left on the bench and ran as far as my legs can take me. In that moment, what I'm carrying in my hands weighs far lighter than the overwhelming guilt trying to consume me. Home. I want to go home. Anywhere where I won't be reminded of the house. Of her. Of my own cowardice.